Astro 5.7 just removed the experimental flag for session storage. Session storage is a way to share data between requests for on-demand rendered pages. So in other words, SSR rendered pages. Now, these unlike cookies are stored on the server. All your data is actually in the server, which has a few implications. You get to have like a larger amount of data. It's more secure because it's not there in the cookie. Instead, what Astro does is it, by default, it stores a cookie reference to that session storage. So just a little ID that points to the actual storage on your server. Now, thankfully, Astro has made this really easy. In fact, several of the adapters like Netlify and Node and Cloudflare already have this baked in. So you've got no other configuration other than just using the adapter. In this video, we're gonna look at how to use session storage using this basic example. We'll start with this login logout feature where we can just store the last time somebody logged in. Then we'll also add items to a cart. This will allow us to click to add an item to a cart and then it will actually update in the DOM for us. And at the end of the video, we'll show how to loop through those items in your cart and display real data for a user to see. Now, there are a lot of other use cases like saving data from a multi-part form, but I'll leave you to figure out what would work best for you. I hope this brief tutorial though will give you a sense of what's available in Astro's session storage. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. You can grab the code down below if you'd like to. We're gonna look at everything Astro has to offer with sessions. Now, the sessions are used to store data between requests for on-demand render pages. Now, because it's on-demand, that means this SSR enabled site has to have some kind of adapter. Now, by default, the Node and Cloudflare and Netlify adapters are automatically configured with a default driver for you. In other words, they handle all the storage for you. You can specify other drivers, like here they're showing Redis, uh, but you have to do that manually. Now, you don't have to have the entire site SSR rendered, which I've got over here, but that's just because in our case, every page on the site is going to be referencing this session storage. So it might as well do it here instead of at each page level. Okay, so with that said, what we're going to do is configure this in a couple different ways. And if I pull up the mock site we've got going right here, we're gonna start with this login and logout section. Now, right now it says last login never. What I wanna do is whenever I click login, I wanna log the time and date that somebody logs in. And when I click log out, I wanna say they've never logged in, right? So we get rid of that altogether. Now, there are a couple of different methods we have access to to make this happen. In fact, if I jump back over here to the session storage, when you wanna interact with session data, they give you a couple helpers. So on individual pages, what you can do is simply grab the item from this get method. And you just give it the name of whatever the session item is you want to grab. So that's how you'd reference this session data in a page front matter. But you could also hit it with an API endpoint, an action, or in middleware. Now again, all of these are going to be server-side rendered, so you wanna make sure that you've got SSR enabled. So for the API endpoint, you can just grab this off of the context. Same thing when it comes to the actions, because this is essentially like a fancy API endpoint. It's a post endpoint for you that they kind of do a lot of help with. They return data or errors out of this as well. And you can input items as well and get Zod validating all that. Middleware, very similar as well. Again, you can grab this off the context. So what we're going to do is set this up using actions because I think that makes the most sense in our case. And all of this actually lives inside of a nav layout. So if I come over here, this nav item right here, we've got login and logout with IDs on both of these buttons. And to make it easier for you, I've gone ahead and selected the items we need. Now this last logged in span is right here as well. So right now it just says never. We're gonna have to update that here in a second to be more dynamic. And I've got event listeners on both of these. So what I wanna do, let's close this down, is first of all, set this login item. Now I've already mentioned we wanna do this with actions and I've got actions kind of stubbed out as well for us. So you can see here I've got an add to cart, which we're not gonna look at yet. Then I've got a last logged in and a log out. Now we can show this in a couple of different ways. Let's go ahead and open back up the nav. But what I wanna do is just hit that endpoint and then allow the endpoint to set the data for us. So that makes it really easy. In this case, what we're gonna do is when we log in, I do wanna grab the data back because the endpoint's gonna be setting a date and time. That's what I wanna actually show in the UI as well. So I wanna get that back here from the action. So we'll say actions, and I should be able to import that from Astro colon actions. That shows up right here, perfect. And then I just wanna grab the action I need. In this case, it's going to be last logged in, and we'll go ahead and close that off. Now we need to actually do something with that. So back over this way, let's come inside here. And once we hit this endpoint, we're not passing anything to it. We'll do all the date stuff right here. So in our case, let's take the context dot session, and then we can go ahead and set on here, last logged in. We can name this whatever we want. That's just kind of the key I've chosen here. And then the value will be our new date. And this will be to ISO string. 
Now, the way I've set this up, because this will be server side, you do have to think a little bit about date math, but in this case, let's just say whatever the server says is the new date, that works for me. Okay, so now we've got this, I wanna return that exact same item. So I could do this in a couple of different ways. Maybe we could just extract this out. So maybe we could extract this out. I'll just call this time and pass the new date up here. And then let's go ahead and just pass this down this way, time like this. And then the reason I'm wanting to do this is because I want to return whatever that time happens to be. Because I also wanna show it on the front end. Now, if you don't do this, in fact, we'll see this in a second. If I come over here, once I click uh, login, remember this event listener will fire, it will hit this action. I'll click login, but nothing changes in the UI. However, if I refresh, this should eventually show once we displayed up top here. So let's go ahead and grab the data we need. So this will be last logged in. And here we'll just await astro.session and we'll get last logged in. Now notice I'm not getting any autocomplete here. We'll look at that in just a second. But uh, right now what I wanna do is make sure I replace this hard-coded string with this dynamic value now. So inside here, what we're gonna do is just say, if there is a last logged in value, then I wanna go ahead and show that last logged in value. So we're gonna turn it back into a date and then turn it to a locale string. So we'll say new date will be whatever my last logged in value was, dot to locale uh, date string. And if it doesn't exist, let's just have it say never. Just like that, when we refresh, it'll now say last logged in. Now, how is it doing this? Well, it's syncing up between its session storage and a cookie that it sets on this page. In fact, if I come down into here, you'll notice that under cookies here, we've got this Astro session cookie. This session cookie is then tied to my storage vault, my storage data, so that it can sync up all the data to this cookie. So in other words, the raw data isn't stored here as a cookie value. This just links it to the actual storage, in this case on Netlify. We've used a couple of methods. We've used this get method, and then in our action over here, we've used the set method. Now, often that will be all you need, is just a get and a set, but there are actually other methods as well. So let me scroll back up here and you'll notice that we also have a couple of other items. We've got regenerate and we've also got destroy. Now, if you wanna look at everything, let's go ahead and open up the API reference docs and you can see all this here. The get method, like we've already seen, returns a promise. The set method, you do not need to await. You can just set it directly there. Regenerate essentially revalidates the entire session ID. Now, most of the time you shouldn't need this, but there are a few use cases around security where you want to make sure you generate a new session ID and essentially start over when they log in, for instance. You can also destroy. This just gets rid of all these sessions. So that deletes the cookie and it deletes the object from the back end as well. So usually this would be when you like log a user out, you wanna get rid of all that because again, this is supposed to be session storage, not something permanently tied to their account. And then finally here, there actually is a load method as well. It loads a method by its ID. Again, normally you wouldn't do this. You would just use the get request. So you'd pretty much only do this if you want to load a session from a different ID. So like if you want to use headers instead of cookies, you can basically manually kind of roll your own and not have to add a cookie. So hopefully that helps you understand the tools you've got available to you with Astro Session Storage. Let's come back over here and I want to scroll back down because we talked about one thing and that is that I don't actually have type uh, safety. Like when I go to look at last logged in, I have to actually type last logged in and hope I type it the same way everywhere. Well, you can actually declare an interface if you want to here where you provide this namespace app and then you pass along interface of session data and you can just type the exact items that you should expect. Now these would obviously be the keys and these would be the values you expect to have. So let's jump over here and go ahead and do that just to make it a little bit easier to work with. So up here, let's add env.d.ts. This may already be configured depending on how you set up your app, but for now I'm just gonna drop this all in here. And we've got a few things here. We've got last logged in and this should just be a string or it could also be null. Now we'll leave cart alone right now. and I'm just gonna come back here. And now that if I get rid of this, you'll notice I now get this IntelliSense. So this is really nice. And typically what I would like to do is make sure that I don't have to manually type it and get it all right. Okay, so let's keep that in our back pocket. And now let's think about how we could handle the logout. Now there are a couple different things we could do. We could set a last logged in again and just set this back to null. That would be a way just to control this individual item. So let's start that way. Let me come over here. We're gonna set this like this. We'll just set last logged in here and we're gonna set it to null. Remember it can be null or it can be a string. That's the way we've typed it. And then I'll just return uh, null. Now we've got to hit this action still. So let me come back over here and under the logout, copy this down. And the only thing we need to change is instead of doing last logged in, we do last or we do log out, right? Log out like this. So let's test this. If I come back over this way, we're gonna log in. All right, so it should set this to the same date we're already on. But if I click log out, it should set it to null. So when I refresh, it should say never. 
Now this check is happening on refresh because this is the only time we're actually, actually updating the page. So we probably want to do something client side as well. So that way it reflects immediately. I've actually got access to this last logged in ID right down here. We haven't used it yet, but what I can do is just take the data I get back and set the text content of that span to whatever I get back. Now, the way this is returning to us, we could either get back a string or we could get back undefined. So let's first of all, check that we actually have data. And then if we have data, then we'll set that state to the right thing. So that would be the last logged in span dot text content. And we'll set this again to our new date where we grab the data, which should again be that string value for the ISO string dot two locale. What do we have? Date string like that. Now here's the cool thing. As soon as I click this, it will log it in my session storage. And then this little line right here will update it in the DOM directly. Now, obviously this would happen on refresh, but I want to show the user right away that I have the last date that they've logged in. Okay. So when we log out, we want to do the exact same thing. Except we're going to do the opposite check here to where if there is no data, then I simply want to set this back to never. This will just be a hard coded string, although I could return never, I suppose as well. So now if I click log out, it should say never log in. It should say the date and I can refresh and it would be the same thing as well. Now, because of the way we set up this action, it's only going to change this value right here. So it's not going to clear all of our session storage. If this was a true logout, can you think of another method we could use? I showed you earlier that we have access to something else. In fact, if I come over here, that was simply destroy. Now, if I destroy it, we'll destroy every single session on this page. That includes anything in our cart, which we have yet to look at. It'll destroy all of that. In a logout action, that's probably the right thing to do. But since we've got a fake logout here, I'm not going to do that. I just want to show you kind of what you might want to use that one for. Okay, so that's a first look at how to use this. Let's look at one more example just to give you an idea of how else you might want to use this. So if I come back over here to my pages, we're going to look at the index. I'm going to go ahead and uncomment out all of this so that we can see the different carts, uh, cart items we can put in our cart. And right like here, we just have random images. This is just a basic content collection. Right here, we've got some products that have pictures that don't match. Okay, so what I can do is click into any of these and then I can add them to the cart. When I click add to cart, I want to be able to add them up here so that they actually show in my cart. So I'll close that stuff down and then let's look at how this is rendered. If I come over here to the slug and I scroll down, let's see, down below here, I've got the same kind of thing where I've got the cart button and I've also got reference to the cart, which doesn't live in this component, it lives in the nav component, but there's only one per page, so I can select it here as well. When I click the cart button, I now want to add something to the cart. Unlike with the login and log out where I didn't pass anything, in this case, I actually do want to pass something to the action. So let's open back up our actions. And you might remember I've got this stubbed out section for add to cart. Now notice here we are taking in this input and the input needs to be a string, a product ID string. So we're going to keep it basic for now and then I'll show you who can pass in some more complex data. The handler down here will then take in those inputs and update our context. Because we're adding to a cart, what we want to do is first get that cart and then figure out how many items we're going to add to it. So we'll say const cart equals, and let's go ahead and await. Remember, getting returns a promise, so we have to wait for that. Context.session, and then we're going to get, and again, I can grab one of those items. We already had cart in there, so I don't have to remember what it's called. So I'm going to assume that I get this back, but I may not actually get anything in the cart, and if I don't, I just want to have an empty array. Now, let's go ahead and cart.push. In this case, I'm just going to do the input.productID. That should be a string that I've inputted. So whatever I pass in, push that onto the cart. And then finally, I need to actually set that, right? And we'll just set it to the value of the cart. Again, the cart is whatever was already in the cart plus our pushed item. And again, I can just return the cart directly here. That means I hit this from the front end, do all the magic on the back end, and then it returns to me an array of strings. So the last thing to do is just to hook this up to the event listener. We can do a little bit more advanced stuff if we want to and actually show an error or something like that if we wanted to. So let's await the actions. And I'll import that again. It should pull in up top here. It does. And then what we want to do is add to cart. That's one of our actions. And this requires an input of product ID. Now, if I jump back up here, you're going to see that each of these items here, it has a button that says add to cart. And this data dash ID includes the product ID. So let's go ahead and pass that whole thing. We can pick it off that data set like this cart button dot data set dot ID as string. Now it should add it to the cart directly. But before we try to update the DOM and all that kind of thing, let's just go ahead and click add to cart. Something happened over here, Console Ninja is telling me, but if I refresh, I should see this up here eventually. Now remember, we have to both set it and we have to also get it on that nav item. So let's come back to the nav. I'll come up top here. And in addition to last logged in, I wanna grab both of these. We're gonna change this to cart. 
Uh, we can name it whatever we want, but that's what I'm going to put right inside here. We're going to say, if there is a cart, then give me its length. Otherwise, just set this to zero. As soon as I save, you may have noticed it says now one item is in our cart. So I can add another item right here. It won't update in the DOM yet, but if I refresh, it should now say two because that's what the session has stored. Okay, so I'll close that down. Let's come back over here and now handle the opposite items. So we could say like, if there's an error alert, I could just say like, there was a problem adding this to the cart. If there's not an alert, then I just want to update the cart.text content. We're going to set this to like, let's do the shopping cart right here. And we'll just do the same thing, right? So inside here, we're going to have data dot length or zero. So now if I add this, it should add it directly up here and you see it updates to three automatically. And this cart again is just selected right, uh, let's see right here, the query selector for this item in the nav. If I look at the way we type to this, you'll see that it's a string, an array of strings. And that's exactly what we'd see if we come over to the nav and I come up top here, we could just console log this and we could have this, let's see up here like that. And <laughs> we could have an array of strings and console ninja shows me that right here. So it's just blender, blender, blender. Okay, now we may want more complex data structures. In other words, right now I don't have a cart. If I come over here and click cart, in fact, it goes to a 404 page. What if I wanted to display all those items? I'd have to get them from the session storage. So let's come over here and let's add this cart page. So I'm gonna say cart.astro, and then let's just make this very simple. Let's get rid of all this. I'll add each one that says like my cart. And then down below here, we wanna have a UL that lists through all the items in our cart. Now you could get very complex with this, but the first thing I wanna do is grab my cart. We'll just call them cart items, that's fine. This will be a weight again, because we're in the front matter here, we can use Astro's global here, where we get the session and we get the cart. So at its most basic, I could come over here and just say cart items. If they exist, then let's go ahead and loop through them. So we'll say cart items dot map, where for each item, we just output an LI. And in here, just like that, if I now go to my cart, I should just have a list of strings, blender, blender, blender. Okay, so not super helpful, but you know, at least we're showing what's in our cart. What if we wanted to make this a little bit more complex? So let's say we actually wanted to display like the picture and the price and that kind of thing. Now I'm not gonna go through this whole example, but I just wanna show you how you could do that and I'll let you actually implement that. So let's rename this a little bit. I'm gonna call this cart. Then we'll have const cart items down this way. Now you could also do this in the individual iterations as well, but to me, it makes more sense to do this in the front matter and then just display them down below. Now, obviously I don't have that many products, so I'm not gonna worry too much about like how fast this is going to be, but you may wanna not filter all your products constantly through this loop. I'll let you figure that out. For now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna map over each of these. We'll just call them eyes, although I guess we could call them products if we wanted to. I'm just gonna implicitly return for each of these items, the products, and I just wanna find the product, which I'll call P in this case, where P dot ID equals I, all right, which would be whatever that string is, like you know, buckle or blender or whatever we had, right? So if I do that, let's go ahead and get rid of this because it's just gonna say object, object. Let's console log this right here. And console ninja is showing me that now I've actually got the full structure of the item. Now that includes the body and everything else. So I could just pick off what I need. So in other words, I could just grab the data for instance, and just say only give me that back. So now if I refresh, come over here, we should now just see the data. So the title, the description, I don't have the body for each of those items. So as you want to, you could actually loop through that data down here below, and it knows the type it is as well. So I've just passed in a string, that's all I'm storing in the session, but now I've got access to everything because it's one of those products and I could just pick it off as I need it. And again, I've got type safety for all this, so I can say, give me the professional blender, and I could wrap the price inside here as well. So here I'll pass in the price afterwards and it shows it right there. I could have a remove from button, uh, from cart button as well, and then remove that from the session storage. I'll leave that to you. Now this is typed as uh, this right here or undefined. So what I could do if I wanted to, let's maybe do it up top here where I could just say that we have a, a type assertion where I say that this is an array of collection entries. If we want to get real complex where we add products and I just say that this is type of data. And finally you wrap it like that. So I could just say, hey, this is what it is, just trust me. Um, and that would work as well. But again, that makes sure, uh, that doesn't give you a lot of type safety here for the car items. But now you can see I'm actually listing off the cart items that I've got in my cart. I hope that brief walkthrough gave you a realistic view of how to use session storage. What else would you like to know about it? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.